Welcome back, it is Thursday and that means Acting Analysis Finding Meters and today it's episode 3 of season 1 of Killing Eve. Once again, this show gives you so much animation material, so many little bits and pieces in terms of acting and prop usage and camera staging and all that good stuff and why wait, let's get into it. So first one was this example where I thought it was an interesting character introduction in terms of what you could do animation wise. You can see the feet goes up to the body and then it cuts over to the front. Now, if you have any walk cycles, this would be an interesting way of introducing a very interesting walk. And then maybe you have a prop that could introduce a later point in the story. You have something else here going on. This is very tricky with cloth, but you can showcase all kinds of things here or here and then either continue turning with the camera so we end up on a profile view or you cut into this and you continue on your cycle and that's now your lip sync. But I thought this could be an interesting way of introducing a character in terms of how do they walk or maybe they're walking something slippery or it's snow, something where it's a cool interaction and it shows off your body mechanics before you switch over to the face for either a lip sync or a pantomime without sound. Second example is this character being back here signing this and I don't know why, but she cracked me up. There's something interesting about her watching him sign. Not that many blinks. And then looking down and picking this up. And I thought maybe this could be an interesting shot for you as well. You might not have to have this previous shot where you see this character's face. It could just be this, but maybe Maybe this character looks interesting and that's why she keeps looking. But it's just an interesting thing of not watching the signature, not looking around or waiting. It's a very deliberate look at a character signing. And this could be an interesting way of a pantomime or just a weird character interaction where maybe you can start off this shot where maybe this character is very nervous because of that constant stare already at the beginning. And then there's a fumbling around while signing. So you can expand on the shot where you would think that because he messes up or does something here that she would look down and maybe help or do something or maybe he drops the pen. But the fact that she keeps looking just at him is super weird <laughs> and I thought interesting. And maybe, maybe a springboard for another weird idea that you could have for the shot. Next up is a classic prop usage and in a way weight assignment. I thought this was a very interesting contrasting thing of this might be your initial idea that I'm holding something and I have to hold something here. So this could be, uh, it's not very heavy, but it's an interesting way of having your character deal with the environment while holding something. So she has to, if we go back here, you can see how she has to look. She has to be careful again because she's holding this. Now, the cartoon version of this is this. <laughs> He holds a baby, he's got keys here, he's got the chair and he has a phone. So to me, these are two great examples of A, you can go with one idea, so it could just be this. And I like this as well. Again, going back to just that moment where she walks and has to look down. I like that she is aware of the environment or you can do your, your uh, spider or spidey senses. She's aware that maybe there's a sidewalk and it ends and she has to step down. You can see this here as we go back. That's what it is here. She has to look down and be careful. And I like this and if you put your character into a scene and again this could be in the street this could be anywhere it's important that you make the character aware of the surroundings that she is or he is or whoever is reacting to what's going on and it makes it more it makes the character more connected to the world and it gives you again acting opportunities or contrasting opportunities where it's not just always this but then you can break it up with that and it's something interesting because it's off screen it doesn't have to be so presentational and you always have to see it and so on and so on i thought that by and of itself this as a interesting forced asymmetry in your post because she has to hold this prop is interesting. Maybe interesting, uh, you know, problematic way of holding something, forcing again new acting choices. And then this example of just the contrasting, massively exaggerated version of kind of the same idea. And again, he, he could step down onto something or step up, whatever. But I think this is very interesting. And I love this. I love that little baby potentially trying to grab the keys. No, it's mostly the chin here, but this could be so much where this is your animation. You have the interesting posing and again, asymmetry because of forced asymmetry because of the, the props. But interesting, maybe you have a second character and it's a baby or it's a cat or it's again, whatever you want to add there that then interacts with this. And maybe that's, that adds another problem because the character has to talk and it makes it even more difficult because this is in his mouth and then the character interacts with this. 
I mean, this is just such a, a source of problems and interesting opportunities for your animation to deal with all kinds of stuff like that. Just so many opportunities to do this. And then going back to horror, which is, I mean, it's it's not, it's still problematic, but it almost seems tame. It seems tame in comparison to what he has to deal with. But I thought, again, it's interesting springboard for ideas of, oh yeah, you can have a character holding something and then you have the conflict of that holding with this interacting and the environment and what do they have to deal with while doing all of this. It's just absolutely fantastic. Next up, speaking of props, I thought this was interesting too and going back into potentially forced asymmetry in your posing. So it's not just a suitcase where you would almost expect the handle here, maybe a backpack with straps, but it's this interesting suitcase that has those, I'm assuming there's little straps that go inside the suitcase to, to uh, put things down so they don't move around. But I thought this was an interesting thing of what if this was even longer and this was maybe this long, so your character has to really reach to get this, and maybe reach less, but now that will create this potentially in your body. So again, forced asymmetry, but also just an interesting way of interacting and dealing with something where it's not your classic, it's a box or a suitcase that you can hold on. It's symmetrical, but it's it just, you got, it's not stiff, so you have to move it around. I mean, it's tricky for you probably with the, with the rig and the setup, but it's an interesting thing of, it's not just grabbing and pulling, but you have a bit of wiggle room in terms of, again, how you interact and you can see how much that arm has to move over and it can pull around there. So I thought that was a very interesting tweak on the prop where maybe this is your pull assignment or like whatever assignment that you have, but whenever you do something like this and you have your character and you decide, well, I'm gonna put that character into a scene with, with props and you know, set pieces and all that stuff, and then maybe think about, yeah, maybe what she has to grab or he has to grab is somewhere elevated that makes it more difficult then you can have really interesting line of action just in pushing that pose more and then on top of that you add those things and maybe and these are very symmetrical but again maybe you change the height of it to again change a pose and force that into a different pose and i thought that was a very interesting setup for whatever assignment that you have this could be a lip sync that you have where a character feels strained where the voice is very strained and maybe that's why or it's no lip sync and just pantomime and that's kind of your body mechanics thing where at the end i don't know if I have that's in here no no she turns around and she has, she has a specific reaction to him being here but uh, again that just as a setup to me is an interesting starting point or like a springboard of ideas of whoa i could do something similar for my shot there we go, Killing Eve, more and more ideas. This is only episode three, I have more to come. But as always, Killing Eve is a fantastic show. If you haven't seen it, and if you can watch it, I highly recommend that you watch it because it's fantastic. Now, as always, as I say, if you feel that this is interesting and you want to incorporate those ideas and those kind of tweaks on ideas into your shots and you want help, I have workshops, links in the description for all that good stuff. So if you want to work with me, let me know. You can email me, you can sign up, and maybe we can work together in making your shots even better and as always if you're still watching this i really appreciate it and if you feel like you don't want to miss any of those uploads you can hit subscribe and you can hit that bell button to get all notifications but either way that's it for this clip and i will see you tomorrow and next week and thanks for watching